Hi, friends. Welcome to Encouraged and Equipped. On this podcast, we introduce you to the women of Christ Chapel Bible Church. We love being encouraged to live out our faith in Jesus by hearing the stories of women in our church community. We are so glad that you're here. In this episode, Misty Denman describes Helen Grimes as a woman with gritty faith, a faith that endures. And I agree. Helen tells us about her spiritual journey, how God softened her heart and heart, and gave her strength to endure. And she gives us a glimpse of where she found her hope. Be inspired and challenged by Helen and Misty's conversation. Hi, friends. My name is Misty Denman, and I'm here with my friend Helen Grimes this morning. And we are going to get to talk through her story, which I love so much. You're going to see and hear a story of... um, God just um, reaching out and clinging to um, one of his people and um, her story of following him in different ways all through her life. Um, Helen, I wanted to tell you that when I left the West Campus of Christ Chapel and came to Fort Worth two years ago, um, I was grieving the loss of a lot of uh, great work and friendships um, at the West Campus. And I knew I'd make friends here, but I thought it might take a long time. And you were one of the first people who... um, really sort of embraced me and became a quick um, friend and friendly face. And Mm. I just thought, okay, this is going to be okay. And in the midst of, um, I was glad to be here and knew it was where God had called me to, but there was also grief in the loss of what I had had um, somewhere else. And you were one of those people right away that made me think this is going to be okay. So um Anyway, just thank you for that. And that's one of the things that I'll always be thankful for and remember about you. And you've been kind of one of my favorite people at Fort Worth ever since. So anyway, um, we're going to hear more about who you are and your story. So that's the only introduction I'm going to give for you right now. But before we begin, I want to know what's some small or big thing that is bringing you joy right now? Thank you, Misty, for those sweet words, first of all. Um, well, of course, as a grandmother, mm-hmm. my grandchildren always bring me joy. The The ones in Dallas that I get to see in person, uh-huh. the ones in Colorado that I get to FaceTime with. But a joy that I have every single day in at, at home is in my routines. Ooh. I love my routines. Uh-huh. And one of my favorite routines is reading the daily newspaper every morning when I eat breakfast. And I always read the sports section first. Do you read a, a paper, an actual paper, like yes. that gets thrown to I your door? I get the Fort still? Worth Star Telegram okay. every day. That's, um, I think, maybe a lot of us old folks like to do I that. I love that. Okay, <laughs> so which sport will you go to first, or just any of them? Well, yeah, whichever one is has the In biggest season headline. At the time. Yeah, oh. I know all about the draft of the NFL draft right now. I know that eight TCU players. Uh huh. Got picked for NFL teams. Helen, I had I no keep up with idea. the stars. They're in the playoffs, and <laughs> those things are great <laughs> joys. I love that. Some yeah, things in some, life. Yeah, we Facetimed my son, who's in college yesterday. Uh, it was his birthday, and that whole Facetime <laughs> thing it has revolutionized mm. people living far apart from it, each other wonderful. just to get to see their yes. faces. And, it's wonderful. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to have to talk college football with you next fall. I had no idea. That's really neat. Those are great, yeah. great joys. And even just that tactile feeling of getting a real newspaper mm-hmm. doesn't happen very much yeah. anymore. And since it. we were talking earlier about uh-huh. being a night person uh-huh. or a morning person, and since my husband is a night person, uh-huh. that breakfast time I have, he is still asleep and in that bed. that is your yeah. time. <laughs> Love it. Those are great joys and routines as well. Well, that's great. Well... Um, I, like I said before, I have really, uh, as I've gotten to know you and heard pieces of your story, one of the things that struck me is how God has really had his hand on your life 
from the very beginning, and I've seen evidence of that, um, your heart for God, um, how you have reoriented yourself to Him over and over in your life. I I just think it's a super life-giving picture of God's grace Mm. and how tenaciously I think you've clung to Him. I've learned a lot from you in that. Um, So before we get deeper into your story, will you talk just a little bit about your childhood? Because I think your upbringing in the church and your understanding of God um, from when you were very young has probably changed very dramatically over the years. So tell us about Helen as a, as a young girl. Oh, I had a wonderful childhood. Love that. I, I loved my childhood. I grew up in a blue collar family. Mm-hmm. As a, did I. Yeah, in mm-hmm. a small East Texas mm-hmm. town. There were, oh, five or 6,000 people mm-hmm. way back in the 50s. Yes. It's a wonderful time to be a child. Um, I don't recall either of my parents ever saying that they loved me or my sister. Mm. They showed their love, mm-hmm. but they didn't s- express it in mm-hmm. words. Mm-hmm. Um, we were a church-going family. Mm-hmm. I'm so thankful for mm-hmm. that, the foundation that they gave me. Every time the doors opened, we were there. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, any special meetings, vacation Bible school. Wow. <laughs> we never missed. Yeah. We never missed being in church. We were in church a lot. Um, I heard the plan of salvation Mm -hmm. as presented by my church Mm -hmm. as five steps. Okay. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. It must have been drilled into you because I can hear that in your memory. Right. It was. (laughs) Not saved until you're baptized. That's a big thing. Okay. Even then, you couldn't be sure of your salvation. Mm. You might commit a sin, um, forget to confess it that night, uh, die that night and go to hell. So I knew I didn't want to go to hell. Yeah. So at 12, yeah. I walked the aisle. Uh-huh. I confessed and acknowledged that I believed that Jesus was God's son, mm-hmm. and I was baptized for the remission of my sins. Was it scary to think if I don't confess something? I, you know, when I look back on it, I think so, yeah. but as a child, it's all you knew probably. I, I don't think it worried Got it. me. Got it. I just knew that it was time for me to do that. Got it. I, I had to confess. Yeah. Got it. That I believed God, or Jesus was mm-hmm. God's son. Mm-hmm. 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 So Sunday school, we never missed. Yes. I loved my Sunday school. I, I loved love my that. teachers. I loved memorizing scriptures mm-hmm. and being challenged to <laughs> read my Bible every day. This is so funny. I almost always read my Bible at night after I got in bed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would be so tired. Mm -hmm. I would get out my Bible and I would literally look at John 1135, which says Jesus wept. So you have read your scripture for the day. I would close my Bible (laughs) and I would go to bed. I can say I've read my Bible. I love that. As somebody who is kind of a rule follower myself yeah. and um, wants to check the boxes, oh, yeah. I totally can appreciate oh, yes. that so much. <laughs> that just is, it's hilarious it to me is, now as I think about too. it. As a teenager, I still attended church and Sunday school faithfully, but I had no relationship with the Lord mm. or with Jesus because I didn't understand that being a Christian mm. was about a relationship not following rules mm-hmm. because, mm-hmm. you know, my church was very much into that. And then it's my nature also. Right. I'm a rule follower. Right. I'm As in, I'm going to read my scripture before right. bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I think I was in my middle teens when my Sunday school teacher encouraged the girls class that I was in to be sure and marry a Christian. She hadn't done that. Mm-hmm. So she was speaking from experience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... um you know, I know Second Corinthians six fourteen mm-hmm. that says, "Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers." Mm-hmm. She really stressed that to us. So, what did I do? What did you do, Helen? <laughs> uh, at nineteen, I married an unbeliever. Yeah, and that was the beginning of me trying to live one foot in the world and one foot with mm-hmm. the Lord. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to church much after uh, I married until we had kids, mm-hmm. and in my heart, I knew. I needed to provide some kind of spiritual training for my two children because I knew their father wouldn't. Yeah. And it wasn't easy to get up on Sunday mornings, get them ready, get off to church, 
And we would go leaving him at home, yeah. reading the paper or mm-hmm. watching TV. Mm-hmm. Now, when the kids got involved in sports that required games on Sunday morning, I let church attendants go yeah. so they wouldn't miss their soccer games. Sure. I regret that now because attending church is mandatory for is not mandatory for salvation. But be, once we become a believer, yeah. Hebrews ten twenty five says, you know, don't miss. Yeah, yeah. But it's an easy. I I think that's a, it's an easy thing to do, particularly when you're doing it on your own mm. and when you've got um, other things pulling at you that are important as mm-hmm. as well. But I love how you can look back now with wisdom and mm. think, hey, if I had it to do again, I would have oh. done it. Differently, very differently, yeah. and, and I guess we all can look back. On oh things gosh, too. absolutely, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. So here I am with with teenagers. A husband isn't a Christian, and I felt like I was pretending to be a Christian. Okay, what do you mean by that? I was pretending <laughs> to be a Christian. Well, I don't know if that's really the right word or not. It's okay, but um, God and Jesus were definitely not my priority. Got it. My claim to be a Christian wasn't reflected in my daily life. Yes, it's, yes. It's, and I think that's a great way to look back at that and think, okay, I had checked the boxes, mm-hmm. you had followed the rules, <laughs> right. you had done all of those things, but you somehow, I think, must have known that there was that lack of the relationship yeah. piece, the there, personal. There was definitely something missing. Piece to yeah, it. Definitely yeah. something missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um what happened next? Okay. <clears throat> so I was married 22 years okay. before my husband and I divorced. Okay. And as our marriage began to falling apart, rather than seeking God's wisdom, <clears throat> I turned to self-help books. Mm-hmm. I remember one of them was titled Looking Out for Number One. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think mm-hmm. I've heard of that one. <laughs> and not only self-help books about how to be happy, mm-hmm. but also to whirl at worldly activities that mm-hmm. only brought me misery and that were not a good example for my children. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think that was the, you had no idea at the time. You were doing what you could. That self-help mm. thing was trying to, you were you were looking for help. But then you can look back and think, yeah. all right. I was looking it in the wrong place. You were looking in the wrong place. I love you the way you say that. Uh-oh. And yeah. so it wasn't long after my husband and I divorced that I met a nice-looking man at a country and western mm-hmm. dance that my girlfriend took me to mm-hmm. on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. So we hit it off. He was really cute. And I learned that he grew up in the same church that I did. Wow. So we began to date mm-hmm. way too soon, mm-hmm. way too soon after I divorced. Mm-hmm. See, I thought the main reason that all I, all those problems in my first marriage, I thought it was because my husband wasn't a Christian. Mm. So now I've met a man who says he's a Christian, and surely I'll be happy yeah. and we'll have a wonderful Christian home. Yeah. So we were married a little over three years when I filed for divorce. Wow. How old were your kids then? Late late teens, maybe? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Late teens. That had to be such a hard stretch, Helen. <laughs> I don't even like thinking about it. Of course. It. I don't yeah. like thinking about it. Yeah. It was awful. Yeah. Um, I was very unhappy that this Christian man wasn't treating me like God's Word, admonishing a husband to treat his wife. And there was a lot of anger on both of our parts. Yeah. Probably a lot of... Just disappointment oh. and unmet expectations mm-hmm. and the fairy tale that you thought oh, you were yeah. going to have that second time around. Oh, fairy tale. That's right. Wasn't the way it ended up being. Mm-mm. Yeah. Not that's, at all. That's rough. So after we divorced. Okay. So this, you, th- you're you about three years in. Three years in. Okay. You, th- and then uh, you divorced him. I divorced Y'all divorced him. Mm-hmm. Okay. He, he did not want the divorce. Okay. So he went to counseling. Mm-hmm. He he said, there's things wrong. I need to figure mm-hmm. out what's wrong with me mm-hmm. that my first wife couldn't live with me. Now my second wife wow. can't live with me. So something must be wrong yeah. with me. Yeah. So he went to counseling. I see a lot of humility in that. Yeah. I know there must have been really hard things there, but I'm kind of struck by the humility mm-hmm. of um, recognizing right. that in a hard really, place. Truly. Yeah. And so he went to counseling mm-hmm. and I was just trying to figure out... Um, why I had jumped into another marriage sure. so soon. Yeah. 
Um, he also joined a marriage reconciliation support group at the church mm. that we had been attending. And that support group was for the spouse who did not want their marriage to end. Uh-huh. And they were trusting God to put it back together. Uh-huh. And they called it their standing for their marriage. That uh-huh. was the big catchphrase for that uh-huh. support group. And it's a long story. Maybe I could tell it another time. But anyway, Royce and I did happen to accidentally run into each other. And he told me he was in this support group and trusting God to stand, trusting God to put our marriage back together. About how long was it between when you divorced and you accidentally ran into him? um, It wasn't quite a year. Okay. It wasn't quite a year. Got it. Uh -uh. So I told him, when he told me he was standing um, for his marriage and Mm -hmm. trusting God to put it back together, Mm -hmm. I said, well, I mean, I I just cracked up. Mm -hmm. I I thought that was the craziest thing I'd ever heard. Mm -hmm. And I told him, God doesn't change hearts that are hard and unwilling. And you meant your heart. My heart. Got it. My heart was very hard. Yeah. I was very unwilling. Yeah. I did not like him. Uh I did not want to be around him. Uh I couldn't believe I was even talking to Uh him. Except that you happened to be in line at the grocery store together. (laughs) Uh, Yes, we happened to run into each other. Yeah. Okay. So I like how the message translation of Ezekiel 36 Uh and 26 Puts it in, and this is God speaking. Okay. I'll give you a new heart, put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body mm. Mm. and replace it with a heart that's God willed, not self willed. I don't think I'll ever um, look at that verse the same way again. Uh, that's a great translation. It is of a great that translation, verse. and just thinking of yeah. your story. So I that learned that God can and does mm. change hard hearts, mm. and we did reconcile after quite a bit of time, and remarried, and we've been married for thirty-five years. That is remarkable. <laughs> it is. It's <laughs> remarkable. I mean, and and just looking at that verse, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Mm-hmm. I remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with the heart that's God willed, not self willed. Could could there have been the possibility of reconciliation without God's work in your life? Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't stand him. Yeah. I, I can't even express to you yeah. how much I disliked him. Uh-huh. And to go from that to reconciliation <laughs> and marrying him again. That there is nothing but the Lord. It is nothing but the Lord. <laughs> so interesting. That's true. Okay, so you and I um, talked recently as we were preparing for this, and you told me about the vows you made mm. when you and Royce remarried. Okay, because this, uh, and the reason I'm asking you about this is because it will play into the rest of the story mm-hmm. um, for sure. So tell us about those vows. Okay, so um, we married again mm-hmm. on a Wednesday evening at church. In the reconciliation group. Wow. And the minister that did our vows, we didn't know what he was going to say. Okay. So Roy said his vows, and I haven't, I don't remember sure. anything about what he said. But when the minister came to me, he said, mm. it's going to be hard for me to say this. I know. It's okay. Take your time. He said, Helen. Say to Royce, I will never, ever leave you again. And you did. And I said it. I promised God. Mm -hmm. And I haven't. Mm -hmm. And you haven't. Was it happily ever after? (laughs) Uh, Happily ever after. No, no, no. This is what, <laughs> I, I think this is the heart of your story here, is um, is God turning that hard heart um, into a soft heart, drawing you back together, even though he knew it wasn't mm-hmm. going to be happily ever after. Mm-hmm. You made those vows that mm-hmm. you didn't know you were going to make, but you made them. Mm-hmm. So, oh, yeah. And when I said that, mm-hmm. when he told me to say that, mm-hmm. my throat literally closed up. Wow. 
And I thought, how can I get that out mm-hmm. that I will never ever? I mean, that was huge Absolutely. to me. Anyway, yeah. so yeah. you asked yeah. me. Happily, happily ever happily after? Ever? Oh, no, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Is it ever? I don't know. <laughs> there just... were many times I cried out to God hmm. and told him, this is too hard. Mm. I thought this is what you wanted me to do, yeah. but it's just too hard. Mm-hmm. So shortly after that... L- let me mm-hmm. stop, stop right where okay. you are, though. But here's what I want to say is I see um, this kind of tremendous growth in your spirit in between when just a few years back when you were going to looking out for number one self-help <laughs> books um, in looking for happiness. And then um, here you are just a few years later crying out to God mm-hmm. looking for mm-hmm. your help. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of beauty in that oh, as well. A, a big lot change. Of, a big, big change. Big change in my heart. Yeah. And it was it that, was that Ezekiel verse that wow. did it. Wow. It really was. It's amazing how one verse can change the mm. course of a life. True. And it did. God's word is powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry for interrupting. Keep going. Okay. Where am so, I? You well, wanted you me would, to know if it was happily ever after. I wanted to know after. if it was happily ever after. <laughs> no. What happens next? You oh, marry him. Yeah. Everything's fixed. Everything's back to mm-hmm. what, the way it was supposed to be the first time mm-hmm. around. Is that the way this went? This is true. Well, well, it was such a, like I said, I, I cried out to God so much yeah. about how hard it was. Yeah. So, And again, I feel like there must have been probably some expectation that we're going to do this the second time, the problems yeah. for the first time are going to be fixed, uh-huh. um, and then that n- another round of, oof, this is real life, and this is yeah. probably not the way um, I thought it would be. So you were telling me that it was kind of around this point that you really maybe started getting involved again in a church, a Bible study. Yeah, a, yeah, I did. I, I, you know, I, I thought maybe I'm... Um, Thinking too much about him. Yeah. I need to work on me and my responsibilities Uh Uh as a wife, as a Christian wife, and let God take care of him as a Christian husband. Boy, that's that's maturity there. So, okay, so we got married again, and and shortly after that is when I began. Uh, began to become not just a believer in Christ. Yeah. I wanted to be a follower of Christ. Oh, I love it. There's your that that's that you're not feeling like you're pretending anymore, right. but you were really yes um, pursuing a relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, keep going. Mm-hmm. That's great. So I immersed myself in God's Word through Bible study fellowship. Yes, uh, Beth Moore studies. Yes. I did quite a few of her yeah. studies. A, Began attending church mm-hmm. faithfully, mm-hmm. Bible classes regularly, mm-hmm. and then a huge change came 20 years ago uh-huh. when we started attending Christ Chapel. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and not long after, I started attending Women in the Word mm-hmm. and being a part of the women's ministry mm-hmm. has been, I, I just really want to say that's the primary mm-hmm. reason that I've been able to keep my focus on my relationship with Christ. Mm-hmm. Rather than the challenges in my marriage, boy, that's that's great truth. Mm. Yeah, great um, truth. Most of those thirty-five years with Royce have been lesson after lesson yeah. in learning to look to the Lord for my peace. Mm. I mean, I clung to John fourteen and twenty-seven when Jesus said, "Peace I leave with you; my peace I mm. give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid." And I would also fall asleep many nights reading Psalm 121. Um, yeah. And I did memorize it at one time, but I would I would fall asleep reading that short psalm. It's a great psalm to memorize if you're struggling. I think one of the things that I uh, admire about you most, Helen, is how you have um, used scripture in your life, or maybe I should say allowed scripture to um, not just be something you know, <laughs> but something that's actually made a, I mean, it, it feels like it's made all the difference in the world in your life. I mean, as you're telling me the ways that you um, kind of walked through a lot of hard years and probably a lot of um maybe disappointments or, hey, this isn't exactly what I expected it to be. Um, 
I mean, the only thing you're telling me now that got you through is your relationship with the Lord and these specific scriptures. And what a great, uh, it's an encouragement to me, too, because I think, you know, we all have a tendency, me and included, to to look for comfort or help or whatever mm-hmm. in lots of other places. And and your real help came from the Lord, specifically through His Word. And that's pretty remarkable. The other thing I want to just notice is... Um, And it's been the same for me that you said your connection to other women in the Mm -hmm. church who um, also loved God's word, growing in their faith, Mm -hmm. made a real difference when life at home was challenging. Um, I I think you've kind of said it already, but what is it about being a part of that, this community that's helped? Can you put that into words? Well, sure. Um, Being at Women in the Word gave me a purpose. Mm other than just thinking about how difficult my daily life Got is. It. Got it. So it helped me to continue to focus, uh, to get my focus off of mm. myself and my difficult marriage because it was it was wearing me out. Yes. It really was wearing me out, yeah. all of our problems. Yeah. And so I was given the opportunity to become more involved yes. in women in the word, yeah. not just as a member, but to get begin serving yes. the women yeah. uh, in various capacities. And yeah. that changed. That really changed my focus to others. Oh. E- even though my days at home were quite miserable, yeah. being in the community of godly women brought me so much joy that that I was able to persevere. And I also want to add that not only was my um, being in the community of women in the Word, I was also in a ladies' small group Mm -hmm. that met Mm -hmm. twice a month, Mm -hmm. and they encouraged me and prayed for me. And I have a close circle of friends that I that pray. We, you know, how us girls do. Yes, I do. And get together, and they prayed because they knew what was going on with me. So it was the it was just being with the God. Oh, you know, when I would walk in the door of the Oak Room on Thursday nights Uh to go to Women in the Word, it didn't matter what kind of day I had. Walking in and seeing all those women and hearing the laughter, Mm -hmm. ooh, it just would bring me so much joy. I loved it. I love that too. And and honestly, um, Women in the Word had, and, and this is not meant to be a shameless plug for Women in the Word, but oh, if it is, go it ahead, is. Because go it, ahead, we love it. It happens to have been life-changing for both of us mm-hmm. um, because it was very life-changing for me as well. And I mean, I can honestly say it kind of changed the course of my life through my 30s and 40s. And um, mm-hmm. I, 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 sounds the same for you. And anyway, <laughs> love it. Love it. Makes yeah. me so happy. We can't say enough we, good things I, I, about women in the Word. And every time I meet someone at church that I don't know, uh-huh. and I say, oh, are you a member here? Do you go to women in the Word? I love it, Helen. <laughs> I want you to always be that that person for us. Um, so, you know, you've already said deep challenges mm-hmm. in your marriage over all of these mm-hmm. years. You had um, made that vow. Yeah. And so you stuck with it. Right. And I know it wasn't easy. No. Um And the hard part is yet to be discussed. Keep going. Okay. So, I had 15 very, very difficult years in this 35-year period. Okay. I mean, it was all hard. Sure. (laughs) Yeah. But there were 15 of those years that were very, very difficult. And the reason being, and Royce has okayed me saying this, He had an addiction Mm -hmm. that almost, um, our marriage almost failed again Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of his addiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't want to be addicted to this. He made promises many times. I'm not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, He promised God. He Mm -hmm. promised me. Mm -hmm. But as anyone who has ever been involved with anyone with addictions, it's it can really just take over your whole life and ruin everything. Mm-hmm. And it almost did ruin our marriage again. Mm-hmm. But I guess due to all these prayers that yeah. were going on yeah. for me and for us, he did finally overcome. It, it feels like... Nothing short of only what God could do. 
It had to be. Yeah. It had to be. And granted, it's only been a little over a year, mm-hmm. but um, it's such a change mm-hmm. in the way that we relate to each other mm-hmm. and what we think mm-hmm. and it's just really sweet. I love it's it. It's really sweet. I love it. Mm-hmm. Do you have some specific? You um, told me you had a couple of specific uh, scriptures that, oh yeah, uh, of course, mm-hmm. that uh, kind of speak to this time. Right. What are those? Well, of course, Matthew twelve twenty six. It mm-hmm. says, "With God, all things are possible." Yeah. That was a scripture when we remarried, and then when Royce was able to overcome this, and then my. My life scripture, which I love this scripture so much, um, Galatians 2.20, mm. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I, I've just learned through that scripture yeah. that my identity in Christ is the most important thing to me. Yeah. And I think your story from um, who you understood God to be in your childhood through now is that uh, development of living life in the flesh, mm-hmm. um, trying to uh, earn your favor with God by following rules, by reading scripture every night, by showing up every time the doors were opened, um, you know, just kind of gutting it out (laughs) to uh, living kind of by God's word alone and by the prayers of the the Mm -hmm. saints around you and and yours. And so to me, that's such a a beautiful life verse because it really does describe your relationship with the Lord and your kind Mm -hmm. of transformation over the years from... Because I see that you always had a heart for God. You clearly always had a heart for God, and God clearly always had His hand on you Mm and your life. There's never been a time, at least, you know, as you're telling your story, that that hasn't been true. But the transformation from it being a um, formality or Mm -hmm. um, something you were just supposed to do to um, the really kind of all you had in many ways uh, to now this healing and reconciliation and transformation. Uh, it, it, it is a picture of the power of Scripture and um, the power of um, not ever giving up on the Lord in our lives. It, it just blows me away so much. I mean, just it makes me think of how, you know, God's word is living and active. Yes. Well, if it were not living and active, Mm-mm. your life would not be where it is and what it is. That is so true. And the other thing I just love so much is um, you, and, and I was, I've been thinking about this since we talked last week, is you 35 years ago probably had no idea. Well, what I was going to say is you had no idea probably of the cost of that Mm. value made before the Lord. I think you did have some inkling of it when you say (laughs) that it was kind of hard to get it out. Um, But the, um, the, the, your willingness to um, have a a gritty faith that really keeps your promises and, and does what you felt like God asked you to do, um, through the power of the Holy Spirit in the scripture. It just, it, it makes me want to go out there and just do the same and think, oh. um, I, yeah, I'm going to live by faith alone too. Um, I think it's such a gift. One of the things I love about this podcast and hearing people's stories and your story in particular is it's a gift when people share their hardest struggles because it helps all of us know we're not alone in our mm-hmm. suffering. And um, you've had a lot of years. It's not, you didn't have short term hardship in your marriage. You had decades of of hard things in your marriage. Um, this is and, true. <laughs> yeah. And and I say that not to, I mean, I say that because it's true. Um, because it's true. And because, you know, you go back to that with God, all things are possible um, through a community of believers, through uh, having, um, you know, being faithful to a body and to the church and to the scriptures. It's how you... If you had given up before, you wouldn't have gotten to where you are now. And I don't think Royce would have gotten to where no. he is now. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a picture of 
uh, long-term faith that just puts one foot in front of the other and keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. And I'm just so grateful for it and your willingness to share your story with us today. And um, I hope it's uh, it's, a, it's a deep encouragement to me um, when I think I'm, I'm too tired to keep doing this. I'm not too tired to keep doing this. We can keep doing this. And um, anyway, just super grateful for your story um, and your willingness to share it with us. Can I pray for us as we close today? Thank Thank you, Helen. I just love you so much. I love you too. Lord, you are so good. You are clearly powerful. Um, You never leave us or forsake us. Um, You never said life would be easy, but you do Mm. say that you're with us. Um, And I see your mighty and powerful hand in Helen's story. Um, And I know that your hand is just that powerful in um, the lives of each of um, each of the people that you call your own. Lord, would you help us to cling to you? Would you help us to um, allow you to soften our hearts um, and turn them toward one another and toward you? And uh, I just pray, Lord, that... uh, we would walk with you faithfully um, through thick and thin. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Helen. Thanks for listening. For more episodes, be sure to follow Encouraged and Equipped.